Hey guys, KND here, and today I'm gonna play through all of the Red Out tricks against veteran bots. There we go. Cairo should be pretty chill. I'm more worried about the later races. I'm picking Solha this game because most of the turns on these tracks are so easy that Solha is just, just overall the best shit because it's simply the best top speed. And if you're good at not hitting walls, it's probably the best racing car out there. I gotta try not to hit so many walls, man. There we go again. Also, shout out to the guys who composed the soundtrack for this game, it's just amazing. Uh, get really getting dangerously low there. All right, I should be fine now. Probably gonna keep picking Soha for the whole of Cairo. Three, two, one, go. Also, if you play against the AI, I found out it's always best to to use your small boost in the beginning to get ahead, because with all those EMPs and different power ups, getting ahead of the pack is more important than in multiplayer matches, for example. Oh man, that's so bad. Oh well, I can still catch up, I think. Oh man, I'm already getting low again. I mean, I really need to focus on not dying.
Well, I'm gonna keep going even though this was very bad. Congratulations. Bronze medal awarded. I really need more practice in these quote unquote easy tracks. So I mostly play online. I don't really get to practice those a lot because they're not very popular. But yeah, that's why I'm doing this because I want to stay good on all the tracks. Two, one, Just some go. practice. Oh, he's the boost pet there. Oh man, these early turns are really frustrating. Gonna play it safe here. He's off. Oh, missed the boost pit again, man. It's probably one of the best tracks of the soundtrack, in my opinion. It just has a great mix of different genres. It really reminds me of F-Zero soundtracks. Alright. Oh, I should have used the boost there. I also really enjoy this map. Three, two, one, go. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm good at playing it though. I probably should have saved the boost for the big stretch, but whatever. I'm getting the boost pets this time. Time to play it safe. All right. New record. Congratulations. Gold medal awarded. There we go. Last track of Cairo. Probably the most fun of Cairo too.
because on class four, this is well. It's the best, the best map uh, suited for class four, in my opinion, at least. I never managed to get this turn right. Also, even though this jump is pretty easy, I seem to mess it up a whole lot. Let's see if we get it this time. There we go. jump further there, but whatever. Alright, moving on to the next zone uh, being Alaska. And I'm probably gonna stay Solha for the first trek, but I'm gonna switch it up for the later ones. Because Alaska is being really curvy at some in some levels, and yeah, Sol is just gonna die in those, at least with my level of skill. But since this level has these very long stretches. Um, Soha is again a very good car, but then again, I'm bad at this game, so I keep dying. Really keep dying on this spot. Well, still faster than the eye, even with dying currently. Again. Can't seem to get this right. Oh well. Congratulations. Gold medal awarded. Alright, moving on to Explorer. Gonna pick the Azera for this one. Just really like this ship. 
Probably one of my favorites. It's probably the favorite ship. Spent most time playing it. Three, two, one, go. I'm really showing those walls who's boss. I really gotta try not to die here. Just slowing down a bit. Alright, here comes the last jump. Whee! Doesn't matter if I die. Another trick where the a zero shines, in my opinion. Three, two, one, go. A is actually the ship with the strongest boost in the game, the best energy reserve, but its top speed is pretty bad compared to the others. But if you're traversing half the map with triple the speed, triple the amount of speed, you're probably still faster than a lot of other cars. Also, tracks with big jumps really benefit. Um, it's here really benefits from those. Because boosting at the jumps makes you go so fast. Ripping to enter the straight section before using my boost. <clears throat> Finding a specific boost pattern for each track is also very important in this game. The best players out there right now probably have a very strict boost pattern for most tracks. But also sometimes dying unexpectedly really messes up your boost pattern and you can lose a lot of speed if you have to wait longer on your energy or you miss one straight section boost. So driving consistency really rewards you. Using my remaining energy as regular boost on the finish line stretch. Alright, for Vertigo I'm gonna choose um, a more agile ship. In this case the Bonara. Three, 
This track has a lot of very tight turns, which is really hard with the last grippy ships. Shout out to Blue for the EMP. As you see, even with this ship, this track is still very technical, very hard, a lot of tight turns. You just grind so much. my health now. Oh, so much for that. Uh, of course the last lap is gonna overtake me. Alright. Well, at least I won the race, but it's still pretty bad. Here comes the last one. We're gonna go back to a zero for this one. part can be really frustrating too when you're still new to the game because it just moves super fast I mean I've been playing this game for some time and they still have trouble keeping up at all hit the wall there. Oh man. Danger. Oh, that was a close one. Abruzzo is next. Probably gonna stay a sewer again for this one. important that you have your boost for this part. I 
And this veteran AI is more exciting to play on these tracks. Alright, I nailed that last part. That went a lot better. Congratulations, gold medal awarded. Three, two, one, go. Vibes in this game are really weird. But this is probably the tamest, easiest pipe in the game. The harder pipes came with uh, free DLC actually. Which added the underwater region. Europa. I think there's a skip here. I'm gonna try this one really quickly. Oh. Okay. I can't hit that branch. I actually never tried to skip myself. But I think now is as good as time as any. Oh man. It's really funny how the game starts spinning out when you die in a place like this. I'm in 8 now. Oh boy. It's probably gonna be hard. But I wanna get at least top 3. We Man, these boosts feel so satisfying. One more try. Yeah, we can pull it off. <sighs> Hit the same branch again. I really don't know how to do this. Maybe we should watch more footage of it being done. So I got top 3. Ah, oh, beat my own record in the last lap. I really need a refresh on those older tracks to speak. I'm gonna stay with this area again.
Oh yeah, I need to have boost for this long section. I think I... Really, this part is really finicky if you play too recklessly because you can easily overshoot the jump. So if you boost before the jump, you really need to push the nose of your ship down to get still get down there and overshoot the entry. See, I really have to push down very hard to make this jump, otherwise I might hit the track or jump too far, hit the kill plane. That's how the developers try to prevent major skips by just putting in giant walls, invisible walls that kill you when you touch them. Uh, these first few turns are really not good for my shield health. Alright, it's the long section, it's corkscrew. I really like these parts of the soundtrack where it breaks down into breakbeat. I'm sorry, it's not a break beat, but it got the beat mixed up, got mixed up, and it's just pleasing. Alright, I think I'm gonna try to go with the Luna again for this one. I have a feeling it's better here. Three. But really guys, most of the ships work on all tracks. It's just a matter of preference. You can practice any ship on any track to the point where you become really strong on it. It's just a good strategy to not, uh, you know, pigeonhole yourself into just one uh, ship. I also know there's a major skip here. I think you can go over the tree line there on the right, but I never tried it. Uh, I, I might do it if I'm in the lead. I'm not sure if you can even pull it off with every ship, but you probably can. Oh man, I really hit the ground hard there. Just panicked a bit because I thought I wouldn't make the portal. Okay, let's try. Maybe I can do it this time. No, oh, I can't. I think I need a, a, a strong boost to get up there. I might try it in the third lap again. Ooh, I thought I was not gonna make that. Oh, I'm gonna die there. Oh shit. 
Well, I don't mind. Let's just try to jump again. Maybe I can do it this time. I'm just gonna save my boost. Alright, one last try. Go up, go up, go up. Oh, and down, and down, and down, and down. Oh, there we go. I did it. I think you can do it better. <laughs> but at least I made it. These little tricks uh, elevate your game so hard, even in multiplayer games. It, it makes people really hard. It makes it really hard for people to catch up to you if you land this trick every every lap. Congratulations! Gold medal awarded. All right, and now for the last trick. I'm gonna stay with the Lunar. This is a really nasty jump in the end of the lap. You can get around it, it also has a skip, but especially when you play again casually, this is a really frustrating part. I don't want to know how many times I died to this jump. It's coming up in the end of the lap. Uh, this part you can go really fast. It's like a long straight section. Like you can boost twice in here before you have to steer again. And this is the jump I was talking about. Like it's really hard to not get it down. Also because you're so close to the ground, it makes it very easy to miscalculate the jumps. That's what I mean, yeah. Like I said, I'm really bad at this game. gonna overtake this guy though. Probably still gonna win the race if I don't mess up the last jump as well. Ah, oh. well, that's it. Well, first place then, I guess. Alright, now we come to Volcano, which is probably one of the more popular um, maps online especially. It just has a good mix of going fast and uh, technical turns. Fingertip has this really weird jump, especially if you come in at the second round with the speed from the first round. Uh, it's really easy to overshoot. I actually remember back in the day when the game was still new and the AI wasn't as polished as it is now. They used to just die at this spot all the time. It's like... They would just... the entire, entire race, all of the races, they would just die guaranteed at this point. And you could easily win it that way. Just need to not die like the bots do, and you're good. Doesn't really matter if you do very well on the other sections of the track, as long as you nail this part. At least it used to be like that. Now they're not dying there anymore, as you can see.
As you can see, I'm coming in so fast. If I don't press my nose down, I will overshoot it. But in this case, I actually missed it. Well, this is still salvageable, I think. I hope. Uh, this was probably a bad idea to boost at this point. Uh, we need to gonna get ahead. Oh. Good job. We missed the boost pit again. This doesn't seem to matter a lot. These parts where you go over a hill and then have to turn in a direction, sometimes really. Alright, maybe I can do the jump this time so you guys know what I mean. Yeah. So if you overshoot this jump, there's actually a kill plane right above the track at the top point. So you really can't make a mistake there. There. Alright, one more race down. Congratulations, gold medal awarded. It's just really amazing how fast this game feels, like there's nothing out there that's quite like it. So this track has a lot of straight sections which the Solha really profits from by being just the fastest chip overall. Also, you might have noticed that I'm using the advanced propeller and the uh, turbo boost power-ups every race. Um, it is sad, but it's probably the most popular power-up combination out there, and for good reason. It's just what makes you go fastest overall. Oh, I didn't think I was going to make that jump, but I meant to do that, really. I mean, there's a few other viable combinations of power-ups out there. And it's always fun to see diversity, especially in online matches. Shout out to all the people who experiment in online games by trying out different builds. Even though I'm super annoyed by EMP in multiplayer matches, I still welcome people experimenting with it. But against these bots, something like EMP is pretty useless because you usually are ahead of the of them by far and there is no need for an aggressive power-up. All you need to do is go fast. And at once propeller is probably the best power-up for that. Another thing that people have been experimenting with uh, is the slipstream enhancer. Which makes you go faster if you tailwind people, and it's a really cool idea.
Another thing that makes this game so unique is the steering. I guess you actually control your ship with two sticks. One stick controls the orientation of your ship, and the other stick controls the strafe and the pitch. So you can actually pull your nose up or push it down according to the parts of the track. In some parts you actually need to you actually need to um, I really lost my train of thought there. Oh well. On to the next race. Underground tour. Just a more technical track. Especially this first turn here. It really quite literally grinds your gears if you go in there because you always you always uh, come in there with very high speed. And, and Braking is not really an option in this game. I encourage you to do it. Which is fine with me. Who likes braking anyway? Well, I really should have looked at my health there. Kind of zoned out a bit. And this is what happens if you don't, if you start controlling your orientation instead of your strafe in the pipes. And if you mess it up at the end of a pipe and you really start spinning, it's super hard to get out of those pipes without dying. Especially since those kill planes are usually so close to the ends of the pipes. Congratulations. Gold medal awarded. Well, I still managed to win it, so I guess it's fine. But, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna go with the Lunara again for this one. Some of these tricks really have a lot of cool little tricks and shortcuts. Are you just a bad like me and missed the track again? Danger. 
Oh man. I really would have needed the boost here. But see, that's what I mean. If you die at the right spot, it really messes up your speed. Dangerously close to dying again. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Ugh. Oh man, it's not gonna be top 3. Welp. Can't win them all. though. At least I know what I have to practice. Oh man. Alright, time to move on. Up into hell. Here we go. By the way, Volcano is the last zone in the original release of the game. Everything that comes after this came with DLC, paid or unpaid. And you will see the developers did amazing jobs on those DLCs. This was another jump that the AI was really broken on. They would all just die. Especially in class 4, it seemed like the ships were just too fast and the uh, AI wasn't programmed to handle ships that fast. These little bumps can really mess you up too if you're not careful. I have a comfortable lead now, so should be fine probably. If I don't mess up too hard by really, really hugging those walls. Probably shouldn't have boosted there. Danger. 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 Oh. Well, at least I'm still having such a big lead. Oof, that was a close one. Alright, one more lap to go. Maybe I can do it this time without dying. You can see in certain parts where the track gets too tight. Uh, you can actually grind on your track like right here. And in these cases you have to pull up your ship's nose to not take damage.
Oh, out of sheer luck, I managed to do the first turn really well. If you get consistent on these kind of turns, you will really improve your times by a lot. Alright, that's it for the original tricks. Now moving on to the DLC packs. First being Europe, Europa. So this is the zone that added those really, well, I don't want to say annoying pipe parts, but I really don't like them. I'm just not good at those, and it has a few really difficult jumps, too, which makes this level that much harder. I mean, they tried to make the pipe sections bearable by adding little indicators to show you where the ground is in relation to the pipe, like these little white stripes. I can see on the floor and those also help you get out of the pipe correctly when it ends so good job uh, from the developers of the game for thinking about that actually and this race actually picked the ESA because I just feel you need more control in this track and the ease of being a check of all trades really benefits him in this track. That what can, that's what can happen sometimes uh, with pipes, and that's why I don't like them, actually. I mean, you've seen me fail like this before. I really think that the Europe tracks, Europa tracks are actually the hardest in the game. Also very frustrating in, in single player games, especially the campaign. There's a few events which make this trick super hard. Like um, the hardest version of this track is probably the pure race, because racing this track without any upgrades is nightmare, really. All right, still got it first. I really surprised by that actually. Congratulations. Gold medal awarded. All right, here we go. The next track. I'm gonna take the Azor again for this one. Oh, I remember now. Oh god. Okay, this is the track that has some of the tightest turns. Any of them. If I remember correctly. Yeah. So this part really, really makes you go slow. And I'm playing miserably at those parts, as you can see. I think I'm gonna crash soon. Yeah. Well, I'm still in first, so it's a plus.
but again, I gotta hand it to the art team. The underwater environment is just amazing. Look at this detail. Oh. Should keep my eyes on the track, not on the scenery. I really should play this track safe, man. Look at this AI guy, he's laughing in my face. Well, at least I came in second. Probably should have used another ship in this track. Oh well. No. Into the trench we go. Very fun track. Very popular online too. great section in the beginning where you go down into the depths to the bottom of the ocean and then you die really hitting rock bottom here wink wink This pipe is actually pretty okay. It's small and easily handleable. It's my favorite pipe from all the pipes. It doesn't mean a lot, but... Really need to have a boost ready here to get all that speed in this uphill downhill section. So even though I crashed in the first round at the beginning, catching up again. It's just amazing how fast you can go in this game sometimes. Oh. Oh, the... <laughs> I think I almost died there, but I guess I'm fine. Final lap. <laughs> oh. Distracted again, but still in first, so I guess I'm fine. Don't have my turbo here. I'm not that far behind, I really can't mess up now. Alright, got the pipe down. Boosting for the final section. But I missed the boost pad, but whatever. I, I'm first, so it's fine. Congratulations. It's not good enough for online races, but it's good enough for bots. Alright, next we go have Hydro Thunder.
cool part about this track is probably the jumps because they're just very long and, and fast. It just feels really cool. But also has a few very tricky turns, this track. Uh, and also it has this super long straight section at the beginning. It's just boost pad after boost pad. And if you have your super boost ready here, it just usually gets you ahead of the pack. Even with grinding that wall. This jump here is... A potential skip too, I think. But I'd like to... I like to take it without boosting. This is another technical jump that's also very frustrating to new players. I remember when I first played the track, I kept dying and dying and dying and... Yeah. But this very hard difficulty gives it a very tense feeling of when you, you know, drive the track without any mistakes. But yeah, if you like going fast, this game is for you. In this jump, you can actually overshoot this little guidance ring that they made. You can land further behind and technically skip more of the track by doing that. It also looks really cool if a boost pad and the super boost combine because your field of view gets so distorted. Just looks great. Feels so fast. So if you look at this jump, you can see I can actually overshoot the hole and still land on the track. You can probably get even more distance out of this. Oh, I missed the boost pit there again, but it doesn't really matter. Now for the last track, Surface Print, which is probably one of my least favorite tracks. It's just one of the hardest ones in the game, I think. And there are some people who are really, really good at this track, but I'm not. Because you need to take a lot of risky shortcuts and jumps that you can easily fail and... Yeah, one mistake can cost you the race, and this is just... That's what I meant. Wow, what did I actually do there? Oh, well, that was interesting. I never died like that before. Where am I now? Oh. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I'm actually gonna retry this, because this is so embarrassing. Oh, it's starting up great. Well, I think I can recover from this.
And actually this first part you can skip landing on the middle ramp and just jump straight to the third one. And at this point you can actually skip a part too, but uh, I really don't want to take the risk right now. Ugh. Oh great, it's respawning me on a point where I can only die. Thanks game. I think I nailed the jump this time. Oh yeah, these parts where there are no rails. You can abuse all of those, but they're also pretty tricky. Again, for, for newer players, if you're just starting out playing this game, try it casually playing the career. It will frustrate you to no end. But that's probably also what makes it that more satisfying when you finally nail them. Oh, still go for second place, so I guess that's fine. Alright, next we have Neptune. The Neptune tricks are amazing, really. Design-wise, probably... Maybe not the best tricks, but, but at least one of the most fun, just of the way it works. Because most of the maps in Neptune have giant jumps for space without gravity, which... It's just, it feels really fresh uh, if you had the other maps before and then suddenly have to deal with a different environment. And also adjust your playstyle accordingly, which is really cool. And also it has this giant ass straight sections. It's just fun again. I love straight sections. I'm not good at steering. Oh shit. This stuff happens way too often to me. I might be able to still get this. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm in first now. Well, that felt good. Alright. Now come the interesting tricks. So the cool part about Neptune really is that there is really big amount of awesome jumps and skips combined. As you can see these zero G sections they just are amazing. And really using a boost on this long section feels great if you don't hit a wall like me.
Oh, back in first. I think it started I started it out correctly but then I fucked up the jump, so be bad. Oh damn, I got teleported all the way back. Well, that's it for me. Really gotta practice those jumps. Ugh. Oh. Well, that was a misclick. All right, red giant, here we go. Not a very popular track. A ton of great skips, but also hard to pull off again. There's a lot of little things you can hit in those jumps. Some of the stations have rotating arms that get in your way and sometimes it's just a tiny beam that can really ruin your day. So this is a really tight skip. Uh, if you can actually pull it off, you can skip this little section all of it and then you can just go over here and land on the upslope. And this part of the track can actually kill you. Maybe I can manage to pull it off this time. If I do it once, I'm probably ahead. Just gonna dive under here and then move up again. Try to land on the track. Oh, I did it. It wasn't very smooth, but at least I did it. Dodge this part and go for the portal. There we go. not to die here. Have a big stretch for regenerating my health. Go under there. Go back up. Oh well, I hit the track there, which is fine, I guess. Alright. No space station in the way. Let's just go straight to the finish line. There we go. Drifting, the next one. So the cool part about the Neptune, um, yeah, the Neptune maps is that Three, two, one, go. you have this sense of progression because the the maps keep drifting further apart the further you get. So the first map is pretty concealed, and you see from the can track on that the maps get more open and you have more room to experiment and try different methods of skipping stuff. It's really cool.
This is also a part where you get super fast. What's also really cool is that they really mixed up the soundtrack for this area, this zone. You have a lot more of orchestral soundtrack feeling in here, and less of the trancey electronic music. Which some people find off-putting, I quite enjoy it. Actually, I like it when it, get, when it gets mixed up a bit. It enhances an already great soundtrack, in my opinion. So another thing you can do here is actually go through this little hoop and skip the big part. Oh, but if you then miss the next part of the track, you're not a lot better. Oh well. Still in first. Guess it's fine. going super fast. Ah, there we go. And now we come to my favorite level of Neptune, which is Asteroids. Cool part about Asteroids is that it has probably the biggest jump of the entire game. You just can skip Really half of the lap, probably, by doing this jump. Oh, how did I pull that off? That never happened to me before. Well, I'm probably gonna make all that time back on the long jump. So what you do is right after this ramp, you don't go for the next exit, but you steer besides it. And just skip all of this part and, and aim for the green rock and then land back here. And it pretty much got me from last to first, so you see the skip is major. Sadly I messed up right after that. But that's alright, I still have two jumps to go. Well, I landed in the middle there, but I still managed to skip the biggest part of it. And this turn at the end is pretty harsh, but you can just really hit the wall, it doesn't really matter. Probably you're, the thing is with this game is, even if you hit walls, you're faster than breaking. So, it's kind of weird, but you get used to it. Alright, nailed it the third time. Just try not to mess up at this spot. Don't die here, please. Alright, I think that's... Alright, and the next tricks coming up is the Vertex tricks. Uh, the Vertex tricks are very different stylistically. They're paying, playing in a simulation. And uh, this was a free DLC too. Oh, I forgot to mention before, Neptune actually is paid DLC, so you gotta buy this extra. For Vertex you get free, and um, it also has some, an interesting twist on the instruments chosen in the soundtrack. 
apparently the most important thing to me. Uh, they have a lot more guitars at this soundtrack, which is really great. Really mixes it up again. But still, you know, keeping its techno roots. Feels a lot like F Zero. Uh, the cool part about the Vertex tracks is that they're not super challenging, but some of the tracks are still very technical. So, they're very beginner friendly, but also still have a high ceiling to reach. With the Vertex tracks, it's the same thing, they get progressively harder. Players online kind of have a love-hate relationship with this map. Some really like it, others despise it. It's really hard to get a good boost on this trick because it's so curvy. And you gotta manage your health in this one really carefully because it's very easy to die. That's my death. Yeah. Well, that was bad. Oh. I think I came in right at the right angle, but I totally Missed the second turn there. Well, it's not exactly a hard map, but it also is. And there I hit the or try again. Oh man, this song is super psychedelic. Still dig it. Oh, you can skip this part too. It's just a little skip, but you can also get a good time out of this if you pull it off. I really need to stop missing this jump. Well, top three. 
my goal. At least pulled that off. Congratulations, bronze medal awarded. All right. Tell so now. I think I'm gonna go with the Luna again. If I remember correctly, this one has a lot of tight turns. Skip this middle platform here and land straight on the curve section. You can also turn yourself in the air and try to land in an angle that's easier to maneuver out in the turn. Sometimes I pull it off, but most of the times I'm just too slow. Should have probably picked the ship with more health, but I'm still fine, so... Oh man. Oh, I'm gonna die here. Finish. Oh well, still first. Now we go for breakpoint. Gonna go with the S here again. Yeah, this part of the soundtrack is amazing. I actually took these chords and remixed it into my own song. We're gonna play the song in the intro or in the outro. Oh, going fast is really cool, but dying is... Yeah. That was bad. Finish. 
congratulations. Gold medal awarded. All right. One more zone to go. Mars. Probably my favorite zone. Uh, it was the last one that was added to the game. Uh, yeah, it's um, very has very balanced layouts, but mostly focused on speed. There's a few pipe sections too, but outside pipes actually, which come in the later levels. Two, one, go. Again, great addition to the soundtrack. I think I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but I really like the soundtrack. Also, the art style of this environment is great. It's just... Kind of feels like a throwback to the desert. To Cairo, but with its own twist. And this color combination of orange and, and uh, turquoise is great. Gen some health. Or not. I please don't want to die in the straight section. I hope this was sad. Alright. And lift the nose up. Oh, there we go. It's actually too bad to hit the last boost pad there. It will always hit you, let you hit the wall. It's better to try to avoid the last one. Probably shouldn't have used the booster. I did it correctly this time, so I didn't hit the boost, and then you can get in here more smoothly, even though I didn't really manage to do it better. I also like to use a little boost at this point. I'm already gonna die here. I really gotta try if rest recklessly. All right, four more to go. Spirit is also a great track, but again, some people don't like it. I really do enjoy it, though. It has some great jumps and some nice turns. It has sort of tricky jump in the beginning, 
Uh, you can actually manage to jump all the way to the sand, sand part here. And after this part, there is a second jump. This one, which theoretically lets you go way further, but I didn't have my turbo ready, so... I probably couldn't have made the jump, so I didn't try to go for it. This little half pipe section here is kind of weird to control through. The best, best thing is probably to stay in the middle line, but it's really hard because your ship keeps drifting off. You don't get it to line up perfectly. This little part here, you gotta go a bit slower and then use your turbo to get out of it. And again, miss the first jump. This is really hard to pull off for me. If you have to react after a valley, it's always hard to remember correctly. Also the sand sections, they slow you down, so it's always good to have a boost handy when they come up. And boost out of the end section again. Oh, yeah, I can get it this time. Wow. Yeah, I managed to pull it off. Um, this is really hard to do, at least for me. This is a nice part of the soundtrack too. Alright. Congratulations. Gold medal awarded. Oh, it was really far ahead. Ugh. I hate when that happens. Three. All right, opportunity. Cool part about this trick is this giant ass jump at the beginning. Probably the only pipe I enjoy because it's so big. I can still kill you uh, if you get too cocky like me.
part is also really cool because you just go super fast. Uh, the jump coming after this helix section is also kind of hard to do correctly. But what you can do is you can actually jump through the track. It won't kill you. I don't know why. And if you use your boost correctly, you can skip another section at this point. Seriously, need to get better at this. jump is coming up again. Ugh. I'm really not doing a good job at this. If I don't miss the jump now, I should have this. Oh, seriously. Alright, and the last two tracks coming up uh, heavily feature pipe sections. Um, but uh, inverse pipe sections, so you actually drive on the outside of the pipe. Which mixes things up, so. Okay with that, really. Again, they, they give you some sort of direction where you should go on the pipe uh, by putting a giant glowing line on it. Which is the same trick that they did with the regular pipes. And it works great here too, really. Some of these sections don't feel very smooth though. I don't really know how I should feel about these. Here, see if I follow this blue line that they drew. 
You also get all the boost pits on the top of the pipe. Really messed that one up. I actually skip a bit, big part about uh, on that last jump too, but I didn't pull it off. Alright, last track, here we go. Uh, it is a giant spaghetti section uh, with a big winding pipe, which I really dislike. I just can't seem to get through that uh, part without losing a lot of speed. It seems like the AI still dies to some stuff. Always good to have your boost ready for the sand section again. It's really cool that you first drive on the outside of the pipe and then on the inside of it. I said, yeah. Spaghetti for the last time. We the spinning around also really messes with your jumps. So if you come out of the pipe vertically and will turn you straight, it sometimes really messes with your aim and uh, you land somewhere but not on the track. Alright, here we go. Oh man, this took exactly two hours, which is kind of interesting. Well, thank you guys for watching, uh, if you pulled all the way uh, through this until here. 
Um, I had a lot of fun. I probably have, still have some improvement to do. A lot of improvement, actually. Yeah, if you uh, like this content, this kind of content, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Leave a like, maybe share it. But yeah, thanks for watching.